Right here. Right now. Every day. Right here. Right now. Right here. Right now. CIUT 89.5. The sound of your city. Welcome back to Career Buzz on CIUT 89.5 FM. I'm your host, Nicole Hamilton. And before moving on to our next guest, uh, we also want to make sure that our listening audience is up to date with everything that we're doing here at Career Buzz. Be sure to visit us at careercycles.com and click on Career Buzz in order to hear our past shows and also learn, out, learn more about our previous guests. And speaking of guests, in 2012, our next guest, Paul Nguyen, was awarded uh, with the Queen Elizabeth uh, Diamond Jubilee Medal by the Prime Minister and Governor General at Rideau Hall for fighting stereotypes and acting as a role model and mentor for at-risk youth. He is recognized as a notable Canadian of Asian heritage by the Government of Canada. And in 2015, he returned to Rideau Hall as a recipient of the Meritorious Service Medal. Wow. Uh, he will be appearing at the 8th Annual Unity Festival later this month for a social political discussion alongside rap artist Blackest Ninja, who will be joining us later in the interview. Uh, but Paul joins us now live in studio. Welcome to Career Buzz, Paul. Hi, Nicole. How are you doing? Uh, very well. Thank you. So, Paul, uh, you, you definitely are well decorated based on everything that we've had an opportunity to read in, in your bio. How did you get involved as a filmmaker? Uh, well, first, when you're reading the bio, I felt a little bit embarrassed because I see myself as just a kid from Jane and Finch. <laughs> so all that stuff doesn't really matter. Um, it's nice to have. But, uh, you know, when I was a young kid, uh, as a hobby, I would uh, shoot home movies with my friends in the neighborhood. So in Jane and Finch, we make like cops and robbers movies, kung fu movies. So that was a hobby growing up in the community. All right. And what was that first job as a filmmaker? Well, um, I, I started my website called janefinch.com in 2004, and um, we made a couple of videos. One of them went viral. This is before YouTube and social media existed, by the way. So going viral was a feat. It was like it made the national news. And then I caught the attention of some producers at CBC, and they were thinking about doing a documentary in Jane and Finch to kind of explore you know, how young people get involved into certain things. And uh, we, I spent a year there you know, just uh, filming a documentary for a program called The Fifth Estate. Did you have an opportunity, Paul, to do any type of education that would assist you in your career as a filmmaker? Well, you know, I did attend York University. I took the film program there. But I think uh, I learned most of my skills, you know, as a young man, just experimenting and hanging out at Blockbuster Video, <laughs> renting the movies. <laughs> I mean, that's where you get your education, just right. watching what other people are doing and learning from it. So that's where I got my, most of it from. Okay. And now you are doing a lot of social political work uh, within the city. Um, talk to us about some of the current work that you're doing. Well, through my website, I'm involved in the community affairs. Uh, I wouldn't. I try to stay away from labels. I don't want to be labeled as an activist or doing social political work or whatever you call it. I just see myself as a, a young man from the community who kind of cares about what happens, and I want to have you know positive outcomes for my friends and family and people who live there. So I see myself as just being a good neighbor and just doing my part. And not, it's not work. It's not, you know, I'm not getting paid for it. It's all voluntary. And I think we need more people who just care more about their own communities to, to do something about the problems there. And we asked our previous guest, Armina, uh, what are some of the challenges in her particular field? What are some that you deal with? Well, being from Jane Finch, the resources are really scarce. And so people there, the people I work with, have to be very resourceful to be, even be heard and to get things done. So, I mean, traditionally, if you're a part of a marginalized group and you don't have a voice, you don't have a platform, it's really hard to affect change and to even be heard. So that's why I created uh, you know, my website to act as a voice, as a big megaphone for people in the community who traditionally have never been heard. So now they have a say, they can connect with the mainstream, be heard in the news, and if they feel a certain way about a certain issue, they can voice it. Do you find that having partnerships with individuals in the community, be that either in the media, uh, other artists, et cetera, are important to what you're doing? Yes, uh, especially in Jane and Finch, I really value diversity and diversity of opinion. So, um, you know, that's why I, I, I worked with a lot of people in the community, even people like, for example, Black's Ninja here. Yes. And he's a really, you know, conscious person, conscious rapper, and he sees a lot of the social issues. And he has a unique perspective and a, a unique way to communicate it. So I, I like to, I kind of find myself attracted to be aligned with certain people who have a unique voice. And, you know, at JaneFinch.com, we have different voices. They don't right. necessarily all agree. 
but they all have something important to say and the passion, and that's what I respect about it. And they just want to make the community a better place. Right. And now let's take a, a step back. Uh, where and what was that first job that you had? The first job? Yes. Uh, let's talk about that first job. <laughs> I don't want to talk job. about my first job. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I guess as a teenager, I worked at a factory. Mm-hmm. It was like 12 hours. It was, uh, you know, um, I think they're producing car parts or something like that. So it was a tough work. Right. And I've seen that there's older people who actually have to do that for like a living for, for probably much. That's all the job they can work. But for me, I was just saving up to buy a TV set. Right. right. So I've seen like how hardworking and, and the, the limited opportunities that some people have, whether it's because they have language barriers or a lack of education. So it really opened up my eyes to, you know, to stay humble and to treat everyone with respect and, uh, you know, there people are hardworking. And, but working in a factory teaches you a lot. Like, you don't have freedoms. You're, like, doing 12-hour shifts. And mm-hmm. uh, it opens up your eyes. So when you do have uh, come across good opportunities, you're able to appreciate it and capitalize on those opportunities. And those are the things that we do like to engage in here on the show because, you know, we, we do want to find out what was that first job like and, and now what was the transition like. So let's ask you that. What was that transition like moving from doing work of that sort now moving into film yeah well from doing like menial labor uh you know my parents always pushed the importance of education and i mean they're from vietnam so they're part of the wave of boat refugees who came to canada in the late 70s early 80s and uh you know they came to canada with nothing and uh not having english not having even like a cent in their pocket so uh, they always push for education and uh you know it's something that was very important and 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 uh, encouraged in, the, in our family so uh yeah you know I had the opportunity to go to post secondary education and just learn more and basically try to keep an open mind and just absorb all the information and the people and just getting to learn everything so uh, you know actually I've always been an introvert and shy my whole life and luckily we have the internet during the time I'm coming up so through my website, I was able to connect with so many people. If this was the 70s, I don't think I'd be talking to anybody. <laughs> so luckily, because of my platform, I had a lot of people approach me, and I was able to learn through their experience and through their profession and their insight and have a bigger view of the world. Right. And now there are other platforms that you are going to be involved in, uh, specifically coming up the Unity Festival. How did you get involved? Well, Unity Festival, I think one of the organizers kind of reached out to me, and they asked if I would like to speak and, and, and share my insights because uh, they see the work that I do in the community and I said hey that sounds like a good idea you know another way to kind of shout out my website and also to share my experience and uh, for me I my talk I want to talk about how you know volunteering in the community is actually a good thing and actually you get a lot from it it's not like you're giving your time and volunteering but you're it's basically free training and free experience and you can it's like a two-way uh, conversation so you know by sharing my story and how I use the internet to kind of promote Jane Finch in a positive manner and how there's a lot of free tools out there like social media that whatever there's an issue that you care about that you can harness the power of the internet and and gather like-minded people and to try to make a change so that was the that's the kind of gist of what I'm going to talk about and you know we've we've interacted with so many you know young people uh, especially on a show like career buzz uh, and some have found that volunteering is unnecessary um, what would you say that it's done for, for your particular career? Well, I mean, I encourage my peers and maybe the younger people, you know, just lay off the Xbox and the PS4 or whatever <laughs> it is that you play these days, right? Um, and all the opportunities I've received and some of the awards you listed, it's because of my volunteer experience that I've been able to kind of position myself and achieve a platform and have a voice and find my own voice and basically connect with the, the wider population. So through volunteering, I've benefited so greatly even more than, you know, the, your education or whatever it is. So volunteering, I always stress it that you can meet so many people outside of your circle and it's very important for networking. And, uh, you know, if, we, if it wasn't for my website, I wouldn't meet someone like a blackest ninja. <laughs> so right. it's been a great way to connect with other people who I would normally never, ever meet in, in like regular daily life. And we'll be bringing Blackest Ninja into this interview in just, in just a moment. How did the both of you connect? Well, this is uh, about a 10, years, <laughs> 10 years ago, and uh, I made a rap video, went viral, and I guess he might have heard of it or seen it on the news. And then, uh, you know, because we're all like, you know, dudes from the block, Jane and Finch, is, uh, you're going to bump into everybody, whether you, don't, you might not necessarily know them by name, but you're going to know who they are in their face. So I guess he walked up to me, he recognized me, he's like, hey, yo, Paul, what's up, man? Like, I like what you're doing, I want to be a part of it, I'm a, a musician myself. And I was like, yeah, like, show me your stuff. And I heard his rap, and it was very unique, because it, the rap at the time was 
really based on like it was a gangster rap and hip hop, but he had a different form where it's really conscious and he's addressing social issues through, you know, the rap music style. So I was listening to his message. I was like, wow, it's really positive and really powerful. And I was kind of shocked by it. So we did a couple of videos together and then he, he grew his following. And then, you know, not only we don't just do music together, but sometimes if there's the media would contact us to com- comment on social issues, I'm like, hey, I got the perfect guy for you. Mm-hmm. You know, and Black is he, you know, he has, a, uh, he's very articulate. And even though if you look at him, he has the dreads, the baggy clothes. But you know what? I want to show that you can't just look at the stereotypes. You got to talk to the person. You got to know what they're thinking inside. And when you talk to Blackus, you know, like, he's been through a lot of struggles and he knows what he's talking about. And he has a lot of great ideas to f- address issues in the city. That's right. All right. And we're going to have him add uh, to what you've just shared. We're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back with Paul Newen as well as Blackus Ninja here on CIUT 89.5 FM for Career Buzz. And we're back on Career Buzz on CIUT 89.5 FM. I'm here with Paul Nguyen, and joining us now is Blackest Ninja. Welcome to the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm here, I'm here. Blackest Ninja in the building. What's up? How are you doing? I am doing very well. Well, even better now. It's yeah. so wonderful to be joined by the both of you because we have so much to discuss. Now, uh, Paul started to share with us how the both of you came together mm-hmm. uh, and started to do the work that you're doing. Um, Blackus, why don't we just start with you first before we go back to talking about Unity Festival. How did you uh, get involved in music? Um, I'm a musical generation. <laughs> well, my mother and my aunt was singing a lot, and I was born in Montreal, and there was a club that my um mother used to bring us to when she didn't have a babysitter. It was like, not a club, but like an organization called the MCSO. So it's Montreal Caribbean Association. I'm assuming that's how it stands for. But um, as a little kid, so at five years old, six years old, my, me and my brother, who's like two years younger than me, would be there. And there would be a lot of other kids there doing that, like being there with their parents. So we'd all hang out. And then um, we, used to, we used to imitate the singers and dancers and stuff. And I used to do Michael Jackson crazy <laughs> as a little kid, six years old, and um, they put it, they put me in a fashion show, talent show kind of thing, and from there just it just went from there. And then um, in the eighties, and my dad introduced me to hip hop, and I always wanted to rhyme, but I never thought I could be a rapper because at the time, like they were so old and they were talking so much stuff and experiences that I never went through, but I could, would love to listen to it. And after I got older, I started writing about my life. It became a hobby. And then I said, let me take it a little bit serious in my like high school days. Right. Yeah. And Blackus, what is your formula for writing music? What formula do you use? Um, I ain't even going to lie. When I first, first started rapping, I didn't even know what a 16 bars was. I was just rhyme words and do things. And whatever the vibe is, I just drop a freestyle, whatever. But um, my formula seems to be changing every other cu- couple years due to technology, the industry, music, and everything. But I would advise young artists coming up to never forget that your your artistry is a, is a branding, is a brand. Remember that. Uh, networking is very important. If you're going to... Uh, cut your bridge. Make sure you don't go back over there. Try your best not to burn bridges. Um, uh, there's so much different aspects to my formula, and at the same time, we don't want to give out the recipe. But um, <laughs> you just gotta, you know, always brand and you know do be about something. Be about your community. I mean, it's like you can rap about so much different things, and you can say that you're this and you're that, and you rep this and you rep that. But if you're not actually doing something to better your community or better the industry or better even yourself, it's, it's all just gone for, been done for nothing, right? Are there any mentors that stand out for you that have helped you, Blackus, during the course of your career? Oh, definitely. There's a lot of mentors in the Jana Finch community that helped me, not just with my career, just to help me not just with my career, but with um, uh, staying alive and being positive and being conscious and being aware of what's going on. Uh, my mother, definitely, my, my stepfather, John Franks, was definitely an a inspiration in my life and in the Jaina Finch community. Malcolm, you know, uh, these are just, these are people that I, you may not know, but when they're hearing me say their name or people hear me say their name, they know exactly what I'm talking about, like Kofi and, 
you know, a lot of different people. And um, I think that there's so much that I can't just re remember them all, but I'm just happy being around those people to give me a little bit of positivity to keep me going and keep me in the right direction. And how did you get involved with Unity? Uh, with Unity, well, they went to Paul, and Paul said, yeah, I know the great, this great guy, Black is Ninja, he's a great guy. <laughs> <laughs> great guy, Black is Ninja. No, but um, <laughs> Paul um, linked it up. Usually he does, like, they always come to him in regards to um, the community. I don't know how come he became that guy, but it's, it, it, works, <laughs> it works out for everybody because he's not the kind of guy to... Um, not put your music on the website because he doesn't even if he doesn't like you once you're you come to him and you want to you know you have a dream and you want to promote yourself he's willing to help you You don't even need to be from jane and finch and a lot of people don't understand he doesn't get paid to do these things right so it's like anytime he asks me to do something i i have to do it so and it's not, and I have no problem doing it either, right? So, yeah, so Paul hooked it up. Paul's the man. <laughs> and Paul, what can we expect from uh, this partnership at Unity Festival? Well, I, you know, hope we're a good example that you know two kids from Jane and Finch uh, can work together. We're different colors, but that's not a, a problem. It's actually a strength. And uh, I hope that other people will do the same. They look beyond themselves and look beyond color, look beyond race or background or ethnicity or whatever you want to call it. You can work, and if you work together, you can do great things. It's more power in numbers and in, in, in having different backgrounds, different views, different Definitely. experiences. We can work together kind of like Voltron, Voltron. a cartoon from the 80s where <laughs> they the, all... I, I'm the head. Don't worry. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> different pieces come together and you become a stronger force together. So that's what I, uh, I hope to deliver at Unity that... We're, we are practicing what we preach. We're uniting together, and we're trying to make the community a better place. Yeah, for right. sure. And to add on that, that um, it's kind of sad that when people uh, see me and Paul together and they'll be like, oh, you guys uh, like the same thing. How long have you guys been friends? We're like, yo, B, we're from the same community. We've been, even if we went to different schools, we went through the exact same things. We know the same teachers. We know the same people. Like, what do you mean? It's, it's not really that surprising. But if it helps ignorant people see things better and it helps people who are who just aren't aware don't have any other friends that's other than their their color or their culture say say that you know you know what i can look outside the box i can i can make my community better not just with my people with everybody else and to, to, but to me and paul it's nothing it's nothing to us it's just regular we know each other for so long but other people they may see it as wow look at you guys you guys hang out like chill be just, just like, <laughs> and, and in these trying times, of course, I think that uh, it's important that partnerships such as these are evident uh, in seeing that the both of you are coming together and being that great example. And, and Paul, what will be the, the focus of what you share with the individuals that are, are coming to Unity? Well, for me, you know, as, you know, the website is an example of something that's self-funded. It doesn't cost a lot. We don't get grants. We don't sell anything. We don't advertise. But it's been in existence for over 10 years. It's still going strong. And we've developed a lot of voices in the community. So we helped a lot of people find their own voice, whether it's like, you know, women's issues or black issues or whatever issues. It could be like a cat overpopulation. It could be anything. <laughs> we have all kinds of people on the website, you know, making a stand and fighting for what they believe in. And that's what we're trying to do. Excellent. And if you're just tuning in, my name is Nicole Hamilton, host of Career Buzz here on CIUT 89.5 FM in Toronto and worldwide at CIUT.FM. I'm here with Paul Nguyen and Blackus Ninja. And Blackus, let's go back to you. Uh, what can individuals expect from you specifically in terms of what you're going to present at Unity? Um, a lot of information, a lot of... Um positive vibration, positive information, and you know what, an outlook and perspective that maybe people may, may not know how to express. At least I'm trying to be, um, I don't want to say layman's terms, but I'm just going to bring it down to the street. And when I say bring it down, what I'm bringing down is the message, the movement, um, positivity. You know what I'm saying? Like what, what's going on in America with, this, uh, with all this racism and it's been going on forever. It's been going on in Canada for such a long time. How we want to attack it or how we want to deal with it is in a way where it's like we don't need to. I, I understand people are very discouraged and upset and 
want to do things because of emotions, but sometimes we need to sit back and just look at what the bigger picture and make a line in the in the sand. Like if you're, it's either you're about positivity, truth, um, collective security, um, righteousness, community, or you're about separation, division, and the opposite. And and I understand that there's a lot of people who have ignorance and they're going to jump on that, but. Pfft, you know, nothing bad lasts forever. And, you know, at the same time, I'm going to be promoting my music, my new single, Black Cinderella. I think you guys heard it. I'm going to be prom- we're promoting the, the movies that we're going to do because we have a lot of different ideas that we're ready to come out with. And we're using our community, what we have to do it. So right now we're just in a, a building state stage and unity is going to be the jump off to let them know what we're doing and how we're doing it and how everybody can be a part of it. And we did indeed hear Black Cinderella during uh, yeah. our musical break. <laughs> okay. Uh, and for for you, uh, Blackus, what would what, what piece of advice would you give to that individual that decides? You know what? I, I would like to get into the the, the career of music um, and live in that career. What piece of advice would you give? Um, there's going to be a lot of nights where there's no food in the fridge, but don't worry, your music will bring you through. No. Um, <laughs> I think that uh, the advice that I would give to people would be um, never give up on your dreams. I, and, and there's going to be some dark times, but that those dark times bring character and they, and they bring stability and they bring strength and, they, they, and pressure makes diamonds, right? So it, it may look grim right now and it looks like, yo, it'll never happen. But once you're doing it for love and you're doing it from your heart, you'll always be su- successful. Wonderful. Thank you. And for you, Paul, what would that piece of advice be for that individual that uh, wants to get? I know you don't. You've mentioned that you uh, you don't like the the labels, so to speak. You have been recognized for doing a, a lot of great uh, local political work. Um, but what would that advice be for that young person that decides I, I want to do what Paul is doing? Well, my message has always been from a standpoint of being a, a young shy kid, being introverted that you don't have to be the loudest person in the room to be heard. And there's a lot of tools and a lot of things out there that you can harness. And diversity is one tool where you can use it to learn more about yourself and learn about other people. And then whether it's whatever career you're taking, and whether if it's whatever business, having that, n- that, that knowledge and experience with diversity will help you, you know, push your game further ahead. Definitely. So it's always good to know about yourself and about the other. And then once we come together as a family, we can work together and all you know, prosper together. Yeah, you know, you got the business side and you got the street side and you you mesh them together and you got like the ultimate businessman, right? So <laughs> <laughs> so that's what we do at janefinch.com. We mesh the do things together, the streets and the industry, and we're like, yo, this is what we got. This is us, the fusion. We're Canada. We're Toronto. That's us. Right. And and running a business, which janeandfinch.com is, uh, what type of support have you had, uh, Paul, in order to ensure that the business runs in the manner in which you'd like for it to? Well, we, we uh, yeah, we're not generating money. We don't get funding. It's all done. It's a passion project. But how it's been able to be, uh, keep on going is because people are passionate. They like our message. They volunteer. We have people volunteering for like 10 years straight and just uh, you know committing their time and their expertise because people want to make a difference and they see how positive uh, the website is and they, they recognize that you know we're the underdog and we want to make a difference and stand up and change our situation and not rely on the system. So a lot of people love that message and they come to us and they just hear, what can I do? Tell me, whatever you want, they, I'll do it for you. Excellent. So we're lucky that way. All right. And, and we are out of time. Oh. <laughs> we are out of time. But the Unity Festival concert happens on Saturday, July 23rd at 1 p.m. and goes straight through until 11 p.m. at Young Dundas Square. And we'll, individuals will be able to to have an opportunity to see the both of you and interact with the both of you as well? Of course. Of course. We're All people, right. people. <laughs> janeandfinch.com. <laughs> and for more information, yes, the individual should definitely go to janeandfinch.com. I'd like to thank the both of you for joining us on the show today. Mm-hmm. Oh, great. Thank, thank you very you. much. I hope I can come back again. Oh, we'd love <laughs> to have you back. CIUT 89.5, man. You guys, man. You guys are great, man. Oh, we love hearing <laughs> that. We are fantastic yeah. over here. Thank you so much for that, Blackus. No You've been listening to Career Buzz, Canada's unique radio conversation that empowers lives, enriches careers, and energizes organizations.
here on CIUT 89.5 FM. If you'd like to learn more about the show, visit us at careercycles.com. And if you have any comments on today's show, please email them to our producer, Mark Franklin, at mark at careercycles.com. I'd like to thank my guests today, Paul Newen, Blackest Ninja, and Armina Kasheshian. And also a grand thank you to Flip Publicity and DW Communications. Our technical production today was done by Fiona Gann. And that's it for today. Catch Career Buzz every Wednesday at 11 a.m. on CIUT 89.5 FM. I'm Nicole Hamilton. Thank you for listening, and we look forward to having you join us next week. Yeah.